Today, we're taking a look at a vehicle that puts the sport in SUV. This is the 2023 Chevrolet Blazer RS. So like I said in the beginning, this is the RS trim. It is the most sporty trim that you can get. When it comes to the Blazer, you're also getting 21 inch high gloss black wheels. You get these blacked out Chevrolet badges. You also get this nice blacked out kind of like Vader chrome that we saw in the Yukon Denali. Really, really love that. But let's take a look now under the hood of the Chevrolet Blazer. It is a 3.6 liter V6 engine, a nine speed automatic transmission that does 308 horsepower, 270 pound feet of torque, and you also get a twin clutch all wheel drive system. So very great in all weather. So with that being said, let's take a look at the rest of the vehicle. So as usual, and as always, up front first for the Chevy Blazer RS. And it really does, like I said in the beginning, put the sport in SUV. It's on a really an aggressive front end. It's my favorite front end of any SUV this year so far. I absolutely love it, but I love the RS badging, love the blacked out bow tie, does come with the RS stuff. It's kind of included in that package. Then we have our daytime running LEDs that are lit up here. And then just below here, they look like fog lights, but they're not. They're actually the main headlight. Very effective, I can see perfectly well at nighttime, and I like the way it looks at nighttime too, it just looks fantastic. I like the diffuser here on the bottom. We have a front-facing camera here too, a little bit of sensors for our parking and stuff, but my goodness, the red with this black RS, it looks very Camaro-inspired as well, so I absolutely love that. They kind of took a Camaro and went SUV, so I am an absolute fan of this front end. So next up, we're taking a look at the back of the Chevy Blazer RS, and already I can see I've got my RS badge and I've got my Blazer all-wheel drive, because of course, this version of the Chevrolet Blazer has to be all-wheel drive, otherwise, can it really be sport? I don't know. Anyways, let's take a look at this nice blacked out Chevrolet logo again. Nice rear diffuser here, it's pretty big. And then we have two exhausts, which are very nice as well. There's not a bad note to them when you're moving, the engine does make a cool noise, so it's not too bad with the tuning-wise. We do have a rear wiper, of course. I, you know, I always say this, I do think it should be right underneath this big black spoiler here, but it is effective for what it is. I just hope in the winter that it doesn't get weighed down by snow or anything like that. We, we do have a rear facing camera as well as a camera for our digital rear view mirror, which I love. GM has been including it on quite a lot of their top trims and I'm a big fan of it. So please keep doing that. So onto the tail lights. They went off for a second there because I'm on a timer, but we have some nice tail lights. They look, again, kind of remind me of the Camaro just a little bit in the back here. I find the back is a lot more calmer than the front is. The front is just, you know, crazy, but I do like the back. And if you'll notice, there's a little Chevrolet badge right on the side here that I absolutely love. And so it's just a really cool back end here and it, it fits the sporty badge that it has. It fits the RS badge that it has so far. So let's take a look in the trunk. Of course it's automatic RS version. It's a little bit on the expensive side. It's about like 55K, almost 60, depending on how you option it. So we need that to happen and I'm glad it does. So now we have a whole bunch of room in this trunk here. I can pretty much fit my entire body just like this, no seats folded down, nothing. There could almost be a third row here, but then you'd lose all this trunk space. So this is really great. So you've got your speed, you've got your nice interior, which we're gonna take a look at in a second, and then you have a whole bunch of trunk space. This thing could really be a third row. There's a little bit of space under the floor, but it's mostly taken up by the jack and the spare tire, but I don't care, I got so much room. This really, really impressed me. So let's hop into the interior and check that out. So now onto the side profile for the Chevrolet RS. Very sporty on the side profile, but not as aggressive as the back or the front that we saw. It's really, really 
you know, a basic side profile of an SUV. But I do like that all four doors have the lock and unlock with just the one press and it's a physical button, so it shouldn't get that frozen in the winter, which is great news. Then we have these nice 21 inch rims that I absolutely love with like the chrome and the darked out black, very nice. We got a nice blazer badge right here, as well as a camera here for our 360 degree camera. And so you can actually see the front left tire here, which is very cool. I like the mix of the red and black all over the car. The only thing is, is down here, there's a little bit of that like darked out chrome here, but also it collects dirt like crazy. I washed the car this morning. It rained a bit for maybe 20 minutes. I drove in it, dirt already. That is uh, a bit of a thing because I think the tires are so big that they're splashing up on the side, but it'll look cool when you take it off roading. So that's about good with the exterior. Let's hop into the back seat. Let me open this door here. Pretty big door, pretty easy to get in. It's a lot of good mix with like the stitching is red and black, which I love. Can't go wrong with red and black. So let me hop in here, show you how much room we're working with. We have these nice floor mats that are like plastic, not carpet. So they're easy to get dirty, easy to clean. Again, if you want to take it off road or just use it in general, that's very nice. Seating position is really, really good. You can't really see my head, hello. So. It's very, very good right here. Excellent view of the panoramic sunroof. I like that little bit of storage here in the pocket. I'll move over though so you can get a closer look. See how easy that was compared to last week. So now that I'm sitting just a little bit over, you can get a closer up look where we have like these kind of like stipplings that are red, like the stitching in the seat is actually red. So in the sun, it looks like a good mix of black and red, like all along here. Really love that nice touch. Again, black and red can't go wrong. We have a button here on the side for our heated seats back here, which you know, I can't complain about. I don't really feel like it needs ventilation, but the heated seating is very good. Then we have some vents here, USB-A, USB-C, and a normal household plug here. Very nice, a little bit of storage down there. There's no HVAC control over here, but I don't really care because it's, it's enough airflow to get back here, so it's perfectly fine. Then we have this little thing here that's gonna fold down, got your cup holders and a little armrest. So overall, really nothing to complain about here in the rear of the Blazer RS. So here we are now up front inside the Chevrolet Blazer, my favorite space to spend time in. It just, I can't call it boring at all. I love these red accents with the black again, really, really nice. And again, we have those Camaro inspired vents that you know, they're actually my temperature control. So I can change my temperature right here from these huge buttons. It's really, really interesting and really, really cool. And it's probably one of my favorite things on the interior of the Blazer for this year. So. Let's look at the steering wheel as well. It's that nice blacked out Chevrolet logo with some like chrome around it, which I do like. I thought I wouldn't like it when I saw it in the pictures, but I do really like it. It's very nice. Then I have some nice physical controls, heated seat, heated steering button actually, but the heated seating is in here as well, as well as ventilation. So there we go, covered that already. And then I also have some cruise control options and some different things. And obviously we have these things behind that I can control my volume and skip the track and stuff like that right behind the steering wheel. It would have been nice though to see some shifter paddles included with the RS model, model so that we could actually, you know, bang some shifts out, but it's not there, but that's fine. It's not a huge deal. It just would have been nice to have, like it would have given the RS a little more rs -y, you know? So, but that's it. Anyways, on the left-hand side, I have some lighting controls and also the illumination, my parking brake. And then just on the door here, I have the automatic tailgate button. I pressed it. <laughs> I actually pressed it while pointing at it and there you go. It opened. So that's the sound that it makes when it opens. And then I'm pretty sure I can also close it from here too, which is really great. So that's cool. Then on the door I have, I really like these like door handles. They're very interesting. They kind of like weave and wind in between each other. I like that too with the red stitching all along. Very solid and very nice. Then I have some memory seating here as well as just some basic window controls. Nothing crazy there. Then I have my gauge cluster screen that's a mix of digital and analog. Although I feel like at this point, 2023, we're this far into the year. I feel like if the cars are coming out, they should be coming out with just completely digital. That seems to be where the market wants to go. So we might as well go there. We also saw this on the terrain last year. Wasn't a big fan of it last year. Still not a big fan of it this year. It's not that it lacks information. It just, it looks, it looks old. It doesn't look like it's ready for 2024 or 2023. But the good news is, is that they do have a 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV coming out. And that is all digital for everything. And it looks very cool. So GM already are aware of maybe that issue that I'm bringing up and they're probably already fixing it as we speak. So that's really good. Then we move over into our infotainment display, which has the 
great GM software that I know and love. Saw it on the Bolt EUV, saw it on a couple of other vehicles now too. The Terrain, I saw it too, and I loved it then, and I love it now. We got a 360 degree camera in here. We have climate control. I have built-in navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, as well as wired. So they've got you covered there. But the infotainment display is just so easy to use. You step in, it's just right there. You can move apps around. You got OnStar, you got different apps, Spotify, built-in Amazon Alexa, all this great stuff is right here in the infotainment system. And GM, this is just solid. I, I really don't feel like they need to change it because I like this a lot. Then just lower that, we have a whole bunch of physical buttons for the HVAC control. You can control it through the infotainment, but Chevrolet has also covered you here where they give you this nice bit of buttons. They're all physical, they're easy to touch. You know, you can control your heated and ventilated seating from here. You can see your temperature and stuff like that for your dual zone automatic climate control, which is great. Then a little bit lower than that, I have a wireless charging pad, this nice shifter that says RS. This is where you can control your gears manually, unfortunately, so it would have been nice to see it up here, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Love the little RS sticker here or little RS. It's actually embroidered into the into the shifter here, which is really nice. Shifts very well. Then I have this thing here, this little rotating thing that I can control my drive modes. I have two wheel drive, four wheel drive, sport, off-road and towing. Pretty much everything you need in an SUV, right? Then I have two buttons for my lane keep. It says a little bit of storage in here. Again, this is nice and like comfortable. I like the leather feel here. Very, very cool. Then we look at the seats. They're not red, but they have like these red stitching. So these little holes and like th that are red painted almost. So in the light, it looks like the seat is almost like a good mix of red and black. It's really, really interesting how they've done it. And it's very, very cool. Another cool thing is the glove box is a button. You didn't see it open, but you saw me press the button. Something open there, I promise you. It's really cool. And then you also have a traction control on or off button. It's, it's funny that the traction control off button <laughs> is where your passenger is. So at any moment, your passenger, she can just throw a finger on that button and hold it and you've got no more traction, my friend. So that's interesting that it's over there and not over here where the driver can control things. So I've never actually seen a traction control off button be that far away from me. <laughs> But last but not least, we have a digital rear view mirror, which I mentioned when we took a look at the back. I can flip it off if I want to see my passengers in the back. Usually I don't. So I have this on. And then we have this beautiful panoramic sunroof that I absolutely love. You got to get it. It might cost you a little bit more money, but you got to get it. It's really, really worth the price in this SUV. Makes everything come together in the SUV world, in my opinion. Bose sound system, which sounds absolutely great. It really can uh, jump around in here if you know you want to use that term, but it's very, very good. So with all that being said, let me put you in the driver's seat or show you what it's like to get in the driver's seat and let's take this thing on the road. Okay, so here we are, 2023 Chevrolet Blazer on the road. It's a little bit rainy here today, so you might hear the wipers go off once in a while, but it's it's currently drizzling. So we're gonna take the break that we can get here and we're gonna go for a little ride. So like I said, in the interior tour, I have some you know, decent drive modes in here. So the most fun mode in the Chevrolet Blazer RS is of course the sport mode. So let's see if does it really actually have the RS name? Does it live up to it? Let's see, let's punch it. A lot of travel on the pedal, a lot of lag, but then boom, we're on. Here we go. Really good. That that exhaust note, like I was saying, that exhaust note look sounds really, really nice when we start to actually floor the engine and drive it in sport mode. I probably just waste about $50 of gas, but it is fun. The, the pedals stiffen up nicely, the steering becomes good, the body roll becomes a lot less. It's actually impressive how they've managed to do that and control the suspension in that way. It's, it's, like, it's really cool, like there's not that much body roll here in this and then but if I turn it back to four wheel drive mode or actually even two wheel drive because that's usually how I drive there's a lot more body roll wow look at that that's so cool I actually haven't really tested that too much but okay let me just drive four wheel drive is it just the four wheel drive that's doing it no even in right now it's on yeah even in four wheel drive so wow in sport mode it really like limits the body roll wow that's really awesome so there you go I really like that. And so we also have a lane keep assist that, you know, kind of when you go too much out of your lane, it will kind of aggressively yank you right back into it. But other than that, it just kind of like bounces you around a little bit, takes control of the steering wheel when it can. We have adaptive cruise control, which is very good, like you'd expect. I like having this heated steering button because today it feels like uh, October. So basically, you know, we, yesterday we had like plus 30, today we're in the like the, the 18s to 15s and I feel like I need a jacket all the time. So. It's nice to have the heated steering right on my hands here when I'm using the camera outside and I'm filming, so I love that too. 
Over on the fuel economy side, it's not the greatest story in the world because uh, it's high. It's about 18. I do a lot of city driving, right? So right now I'm doing about 10, but my worst has been like, I've seen 18 and my best actually doing a lot of highway driving has been like the low eights. So that's actually pretty decent. This digital rear view mirror is probably one of the best I've had so far. Like, it's, to the, it's such high quality even at nighttime, but it's to the point where like, if a, if a smaller car pulls up to me at the right angle, I can see exactly what they're doing. I can see their whole face right there. It's very detailed. And it's like, even in the rain, like I'm currently driving in the rain and it's kind of picking up. So hopefully you can't hear that too much on the audio, but I don't have a drop of rain at all on this thing so it's nice because it's kind of protected under the bumper under the the lip for the where the trunk is that there's the word i'm looking for geez so it's kind of protected so you know snow and stuff is going to weigh it down i imagine that ice eventually will get to it and i imagine snow eventually will get to it but you can have an add-on that will clean it for you if that part is also not frozen in the winter. So speaking of winter though, I think that this car is gonna be exceptional in the winter. The four wheel drive is very stable. I've been driving in the wet, driving in like, you know, it's been downpouring at a lot of times during the week. And it's just been sticking to the road, four wheel drive if I don't feel confident in the two wheel drive, but usually two wheel drive gets me through. But I know in the winter, in the snow, in the ice, the four wheel drive will pull you through almost anything. Then you also have a fun sport mode that you can play with. And if it really gets bad, you have an off road mode that you can try out if you do get stuck. In the off road mode, I kind of did test it. I went on some like bumpy things. I, but I mean, again, I can test off road mode on any street here in Quebec. I think every person who's ever driven in Quebec can probably accurately drive on the surface of the moon because it's just craters everywhere here in Quebec. If you live here or anywhere near here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's just brutal. So the off-road mode, I can just use it on the street and it does kind of balance things out, kind of makes things a little bit more locking and stuff. So that's really cool. Visibility for the Blazer is very good too. Like I I love the ride height in here. It's, it's not like super high, but it's a little bit elevated. So I do feel very comfortable in here. The ride quality is great despite driving over craters in the Quebec road. So that's great. I can see my blind spot very well. They have like a little a little window right back there that I can kind of see what's going on. That's really great. The 360 degree cameras, the front and back cameras are really high quality. Like it's impressive. Maybe I can film a video on them. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a cool concept? Filmed, entirely filmed on the Chevy Blazer RS. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy, but they don't have any output source, so I couldn't do it. But anyways, it's very high quality. You can always see where you're going. It gives you really great confidence. So yeah, the only thing that like, sucks sucks is, or or is not the greatest thing is that the gauge cluster is you know dated or to me it's dated anyways but that's it like it literally stops there like there it's a very very solid suv maybe it's not the most luxury thing luxurious thing in the world the ride quality can be rough at times but for what you want out of a sporty suv this has got it unlocked. Like, so if you wanted something luxurious, then you would have to look at maybe Cadillac or something like that. But the price point here is really good. 50 to 55K and then top end, like, you know, all bells and whistles added. You're looking maybe about like 60K. This is a really great value SUV for me. I love the sportiness, love the pickup, just over 300 horsepower. It's great, it's just great. There's not a lot bad to say about it. It's got everything you could need. Great for the winter. You know, GM cars that are usually good in the winter. I have tested the, a few of them. So if it drives anything like those, it'll be great in the winter. And yeah, I think that's gonna do it for the overall thoughts. I didn't say it was overall thoughts, but that's what I was doing. It was the overall thought. It's not so great on fuel, but what SUV really is, unless you're going with a hybrid. So there's that too. But overall, if you're in the market for a Chevrolet Blazer RS, it does earn the RS badge interior, exterior wise good it does earn it in the performance sector as well so i think that's good as well and i can't wait to see what they do i can't wait to see what they do with this platform they're going to electrify it and maybe they'll update this version too and we'll have a gas blazer and an electric blazer for a while which would be pretty awesome i would take that as well so yeah with that being said i can't wait to see what they do next with the chevrolet blazer and i am here for all of it so hopefully i can get my hands on the next one that will be electrified i believe it's coming out in 2024 that's from what i've seen like from what i've been able to tell but hopefully, hopefully I can get my hands on it. And if I do, I will be right here in the driver's seat for you. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, you can find me Technical Cars Everywhere. Make sure you subscribe here, make sure you watch the video entirely here, and then go over to my channel and check out all of the stuff I got for you over there. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I'll see you in the next week, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.